Let's turn with me the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 1 to 3. He baked the unleavened bread and they ate. Watch this point, okay? Don't forget. And when he asked, he didn't want to. The angels, they don't want to come inside, but he insisted. He insisted strongly. Now, who is this Lord? Let's see in chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. This is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of Chaldeans. How Lot ended up in Sodom, chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, just if you cannot turn the Bible, just listen carefully. Okay? Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. And chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Lot also who went with Abraham had flock and herds and tents. Abraham was a very rich man, the word of God says so. And Lot also had flock, herds and tents. Now when you go down, the sixth word, now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together. This always happened to the Christians. When they have everything, when they, are not, they don't have nothing, they will dwell together in peace. When they have everything, there the problem starts. For their positions were so great that they could not dwell together. Verse 7, And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites, they dwelt in the land. Now, Abraham was telling Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me. Why? Because we are brothers. Really, Lot was the nephew of Abraham. And between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Is it not the whole land before you? And please, separate from me. See the beauty of Abraham. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. And if you take the right, and I will go to the left, just please, just keep yourself in Lord's position. What you would have been done? Church is very silent. I'm telling you, what you would have done, we would have done the same way how Lord, Lord's behaved. What he did, what he did, he chose the best. It says, after all, what 
Abraham's done to him, what he did in return. Number 10, and Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like, it was like the garden of the Lord, like the land of the Egypt, as you go towards Zohar. So, as it was placing his eyes, he chose the best, what he thought. And he journeyed towards Jordan, and they separated from each other. What an ungrateful one. But see, what, what is the, 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 the gift of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, which was in Abraham throughout his lifetime? What he said, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. This is the law and the prophets. Okay. What he wanted, he also would have liked that in his heart, isn't it? But he's selling, you take it, my brother. My son, you take that place. Lord, he was an orphan. Huh? He didn't have father or mother. Abraham, why he has to bring Lord and his uh, family with, along with him? It is a burden for him. But he thought in his heart, Poor fellow, he doesn't have a father. Let me be, be, let me be a father for him. And he was bringing him along with him. It is not an easy thing. Now, chapter uh, verse twelve, in the same thing. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Now listen carefully. But the men of Sodom, number 13, were exceedingly wicked and sinful against Lot. Normally, when we go and buy a land, what is the first thing we see? We will see how are the natives of that place. Are they good? What is their culture? What is their behavior? If the people are full drunkards, will we be able to go and buy a land over there? Well, definitely we won't think it. Even they give it for free. Isn't it? No. Because we will consider about our family. We wanted to dwell peacefully. Isn't it? But Lot never bothered, never considered anything. He walked by sight. In Proverbs 19.3 it says, the foolishness of a man twist his way. Proverbs 14, 12 and 16, 25, it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Let's see a bit what is happening to Abraham. Chapter 13, 14 to 7, 17, when we read, and the Lord said to Abraham, listen very carefully, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, praise the Lord. Sometime we will get along with the people and we will lose our vision. I'm telling you honestly, you must you, sh you should see with who are you are getting acquainted with. Sometimes you cannot hear from the Lord. You cannot see vision. You don't feel like reading the word of God. Please check your surroundings and your friend. It says in Proverbs 22, I think, 13, 20. Pastor, can you display that? Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So if you are walking with wise, you will be wise. I don't know. I'm sorry to say that to Lot, but the sins the day 
Abraham separated from Lot, what happened? God started talking to him again. And he said, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which you see I give to you, verse 15, uh, chapter 13, huh, to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise. Walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Just imagine, he, he would have got boosted up, isn't it? First of all, he has lost his son, nephew, and he would have expected, I have done so much for him in his heart. He is a human. I have done so much for him. He never bothered to ask me. I am an elderly man. He never bothered to ask me, Papa, you first you go. I am young. I will survive anywhere. You go, Dad. You select your choice. But he never thought of it. And he would have seen his heart. He would have got very sad. But God boosted him up. He said, go. You are seeing, but I will give this land. This Canaan. Yesterday, I have seen Pastor David, uh, Brother David has sent some photos from uh, Israel. Beautiful. You know, rich in ir irrigation. You know, the plants and everything, when I saw, I said, my God, I should dwell there. Okay? Amen. Most of the time, our spirit, our spiritual visions are veiled or terribly covered. We have to check with whom we are associating. I am giving you, this is a warning. This is a warning for you all. That's what I said. He who walks with wise men will be wise. As soon as Lot left Abraham, God spoke to Abraham. I will take you back to chapter 19. They were dining at the house of Lot, who the angels... And they were telling him, because their business is not to stay inside his house, their business is to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So in chapter 12 it says, the angels are telling, have you, have you anyone else here, son-in-laws, your sons, your daughters, whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place. For we will destroy the place because the outcry against this has grown great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy. Anyway, see, because of Abraham, Lot is finding favor because of Abraham. And so Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws sons-in-law, who had married his daughters. Who has married his daughter and said, get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this uh, city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. See, initially if you would have spoken with someone about God, and the matter of God, the warning from God, they would have taken it seriously. All of a sudden, you are going and telling your son-in-law, get up, God is going to uh, destroy this. Definitely, it will seem you are joking. If you are serious with anyone about God's business, they will be serious with you. If not, they will never take it as they will take it as take it for granted, I'm telling. I'm telling how he was uh, coming and telling uh, Brother Jimmy, what is your lifestyle? What is your lifestyle? 
Inside the church, we are holy, holy. But outside, I'm not telling. You decide. Is Lord a righteous man? Is Lord is a righteous man? Tell me. By word, it says it's a righteous man. But his activity was not like that. I'm coming to the point. Yes, he's, according to 2 Peter 2, 7, and delivered righteous Lord who was oppressed with the filthy conduct of the wicked. But he was a righteous man. But here, when the angels came, where he was sitting? At the gate of the Sodom. He was sitting there. Why? What is the business for him to sit there? I'm asking, to see whatever they are doing? What he should have done? Somebody answer me. What Lot would have done? First of all, the sons-in-law, so the sons-in-law, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, do not unequally yoke together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with dark? Now I am going to give the title for these sermons. What is the title for the sermon? Now you had to tell me, I have completely forgotten the title for the sermon. Tell me. I tell. For God, but doing it my way. I am for God only, but I will do anything, not in godly way, not in the way that God wanted me to do, I will do it my way. This is our lifestyle. This is the way Lot was living his life. He was a righteous man because he knows God very well. Definitely, Abraham, seeing by Abraham, it is he got it through that, but he did everything in his way. Yes. Now, I haven't read in the Bible, I don't know, in my Bible, I haven't read. Have you read, have you read that Lot was praying? Oh, Lot sacrificed, Pastor Joy? Anybody? Huh? Never, never I read. But he is a righteous man, huh? Proverbs 15, 21, 29 says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. In James 5, 16, The effective fervent prayer of righteous man availeth much. Why I am telling is, in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 29 and 30, it says, The people of the land have you, um, used oppressions, committed robbery, and... Uh, uh, mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. 30 says, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. No one. For Sodom and Gomorrah, God never find anyone, but Lord was sitting in the gate and seeing and what they are doing, he never prayed. He never interceded. But Abraham was interceding for Sodom. God was telling, God was telling to Abraham, I'm going to destroy. And he said, Father, if there is 50, if there is 45, if there is 30, oh, if there is uh, uh, 35, 15, Ten, before he comes to five, God vanished. Because God knows, go, Abraham will pull me there and he will come and say, oh, one lot is there, Lord. God knows the heart of the people. And he just went. Abraham was interceding. But Lord, he was staying there. He never bothered. Instead of falling at the feet of God, he was sitting in the gate of Sodom. 
Okay, now, come, we'll come back to the business of the angels. In 1916, verse 16, it says, and while he was lingering, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful. He's merciful for the sake of Abraham. It is clearly mentioned in the word of God. They brought them out and set them outside the city and said, escape for your life, escape to the mountains. Do not look behind, nor stay anywhere, lest you be destroyed. Why Lord said, escape to the mountains? In Psalms 20, uh, 72 verse 3 say, the mountains will bring peace to the people. Little hills by righteousness. So God said, go to the mountains. Because... He cannot see the sight, what is going to happen. So let him uh, stay peacefully in the mountains. The mountains will bring peace to the people, it says. But again, Lord said, please know my Lord, before I escape to the mountains, evil will overtake me. His heart is always thinking about evil. The righteous man is like a lion. He should be bold enough. It says, I think, in 28, uh, Proverbs uh, 28, we can read that. But this one says, no, Lord, I don't think that I can make it to the mountains. Let me settle in the small city. And what? And he said, the angel is telling the next word, 21, I have favored you concerning this thing also. This request, grant this request too. That means there are so many requests God is really granting him. When he says something, he is doing something. And he said that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry up, escape there, for I cannot do anything until... You are there. So the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun rose, Lord rain, brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. He overthrew those cities. Lot's wife looked back, became a pillar of salt. Now I'm going to talk about Lot's wife here. Psalm 18.22, uh, Proverbs 18.22, it says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 19, 14 says, A prudent wife is from the Lord. And Proverbs 19, 13 says, And the contention of a wife are a continual dripping. Listen, when the herdsmen of uh, Abraham and Lord's were fighting, I'm, I'm in my imaginary, I'm thinking maybe Lord's wife only would have stirred it. Okay? Yes, because if she is a faithful one, it, she is a God-given one, what she would have told Lot, hey man, don't do this to your uncle. We were there, and you were not having a mother or father. He brought us to this place. Give him the first priority. Is it true or not? If it is a wise, a woman of virtue, definitely he would have stood beside her husband and told, give the first priority to your uncle. But she... Mm. And the other thing, raising the children. Mothers, you are taking the big part, the huge part, to raise your own children, especially daughters. She never... I don't know whether you have read it, Till the last, what has happened? She never. And when God was pouring the fire and the hailstone upon the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, in spite of telling, don't look behind, she looked behind and became a pillar of salt. So, 
heart is full of lust, worldly wealth. Oh my God, I have, I have collected all my things now. What is going to happen to my things? That's it. Pillar of salt. How many of us are being at the pillar of salt looking back? God is telling, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. See, God never liked anyone dealing with, harshly with Abraham. He said, in you, I will bless. Whoever coming against you, they are coming against me. But Lord's, uh, Lord, Lord's act, God didn't like it at all. But for the sake of Abraham, he was bearing it. Now, she never brought up her daughters in a godly way. She was not obedient. Even in spite of telling. Definitely she would have been there when they were pulling and uh, they, want, they were taking them out of the city and they were bringing them to Zoar. They were telling. She overheard. She heard. But even though she didn't behave properly. So wise woman built the house, but the foolish pulls it down. She did the same thing. She was a foolish one. She pulled the whole family down. Now, they came to Zohar. Uh, <laughs> finally, he lost everything. Who? Lord. He lost his wife. He lost his wealth. Now, he was running for his life along with his daughters. Now, he was scared to stay in Zohar. He is a righteous man. Why he should? He walked by sight, not by faith. When God has given him a promise, go to Zohar, because of you, I'm not going to destroy the city. He should have believed it. But what he did, he got scared. He is running towards the mountain. And that also he is going and getting inside a cave. And what happened? The eldest one. What a wonderful idea she gave. Let's lie down with our father. What a shame. And she was telling, see, Lot was lying. When the, it says, it says, now when I was preaching to you, they said, they, 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 they are the son-in-laws, sons-in-law. And when he was telling to the people, hey, don't do anything to the angel, I have two virgins. Can you believe that? So the children will watch the parents, uh, that what the parents are telling. If you are telling the lies, your children will become liars. You stand for the truth, they will stand for the truth. Where is your dad? Dad will be there, they will say, he's in the bathroom. Because when they were small, they would have taught. Tell, tell, I'm in the bathroom. Oh, this person, I cannot talk to him now. You tell him, I'm not there. Oh, tell him, I'm going down. Oh, tell him, I have left the phone and gone somewhere. They are learning. You are the teachers to your children, parents. Now, they were in the, this thing, and they gave what she did. I, I See, she is telling there is no man in this earth. Is it true? God has wiped out the whole earth. And see how she's telling. And the poor, the, the second, the, the sister is listening to that. And both are behaving what the eldest daughter did. And the son was born for the first one, Moabites. And the second one, hmm. Can, you, can someone read Deuteronomy 23, 3? Let me read because we are running short of time. And Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord even to the 10th generation. 
they cannot enter to the congregation of God. None of his descendants shall enter the congregation of the Lord. Amen and praise God. Amen. Mothers, fathers, train up a child in the way they should go. When they are old, they will never depart from it. Leave a child on his or her own, they will bring a shame to the mother. I have seen with my eyes, when my children, I used to beat them. I got beatings, night beating from my father, and I have told, oh my God, why I was born for this man. But later, when I come to my stage, I realized and I thanked I love my, even he beat me up, I love my father. But when the beating times, I hate. I'm telling you. If he wouldn't have beaten me, I don't know where I would have been. I'm telling you honestly, I'm touching my heart, I'm standing in the presence of God. I was very naughty. And my father, my God has given me such a father to correct me. And I believe so do I to my children. Okay. And 1932. That we have finished with that. Now, I wanted to bring Isaac here. He was doing everything. Before Isaac, I will tell. He was doing everything. His act was for God, but doing it in his way. Whatever, see, in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but his, he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, I wanted to just brush up uh, Abraham's life. Now, Abraham, he also received the angel when he said, come under my tent. They came. And he went to the wife Sarah and said, they are here, prepare. But in Lord's tent, we never read that Lot has gone to the wife and asked the wife to prepare something, isn't it? That means they, those three are in th three direction, against to north, east, and west, like that, in Lord's family. But in Abraham's family, she, he went to Sarah, and Sarah prepared the meal. And the other thing is, God, he himself is giving a good conduct certificate about Abraham. In 1819, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household. It says, I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that we, which he had spoken of him. See, none of the promises have fallen down to the ground because he was walking according to the commandment of God. Abraham. The third thing, he was interceding. He was an intercessor. He was a prayer warrior. He was a man who loved to sacrifice. Even he dared to sacrifice his own son. He went up to that and he was telling to the, see, just imagine, he was taking his son to sacrifice and he was telling to the servants, okay, you stay here. I and my lad, we will go and worship the Lord and come. Hey, he's going to sacrifice. But he's telling, I want to worship the Lord and come. What a wonderful character he has. And the other thing, when Lord, after doing such a thing, he never bothered about his uncle. Uh, he was going and staying in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was taken up by those kings. And um, there is a Hebrew lad came back and told, your nephew, they were uh, taken into capti captivity. They were taken. What he is telling, he was taking the choices, 318 servants who can fight well. He is going after them, and he is 
bringing him back. He could have, oh my God, good, let him go. He could have stayed, isn't it? We, if someone has done something bad to us, we will wait when we will hear a bad thing about that person for us to have a satisfaction. And he, we will say, oh, God has punished him like that. But he was not like that. He is winning evil with good. He is winning, yes, evil with good. Let us have that kind of a mentality or mindset up. And when, the, uh, the, the, when he was bringing back his nephew, the, 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 the people, the, prin the princess and the, the, the kings are going and telling, they welcome him and say, keep all the spoil with you. And what he did, no, I have lifted my hand to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread or sandal strap, that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I had made Abraham rich. My father has made me rich, not you. When I take this spoil, you will say, I have made you, I don't want. He considered that to a least thing. Okay? And when he was, uh, okay, that I have completed. Now, finally, he called his faithful servant, Sarah. She died. Now the time has come for Isaac to get married. He called his faithful servant and made him to swear and said, you will not take a wife for my son from daughters of these Canaanites among whom I dwell. He could have easily got us. ah. He said, no. Why? What happened to Solomon? He was very faithful and god caring What happened? When he started taking so many, Je from Gentiles, what happened? They turn away his heart from following the Lord. That it is recorded in the Bible. But Lord's lifestyle was influenced by sodomites. The drinking habit, the way of the girl's lifestyle. Whoa. Now, this is more than enough, I think. You will say, oh, when mama will stop? Then how is our lifestyle? We know we are purchased by his precious blood, living a life of holiness for God. Is it for God, but doing it by my way, or it is for God by doing it in his way? Just you decide it. Abraham did everything for God, but he did. For God in his way. You compare it with Lot. Where are you standing? Today I'm asking the same question, including me also. Am I for God? Am I doing everything my way or in his way? Let this question echo in your mind and heart and I'm keeping our God, who is the possessor of the heaven and earth, as a witness for us today. Let us examine ourselves. Who are we? These people draw near me, near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Is it that we are doing? Abraham trusted, tried, and proved. But Lord, his trusting was not in the Lord. He wavered. He walked by sight. Where do we stand? He knows it all. He knows it well. Amen and praise God.